most days. I spend my days trying to figure out what the days mean, and I'm stuck. Stuck between caring too much and not caring enough, between holding on too long and letting go too easily, feet stumbling beneath me, trying to follow this narrow path. I look around, and all I see are faces that laugh, grass, greener on the other side, eyes wide, brimming smiles and full hearts, music on blast, and a nervous excitement from the accidental touch of two lovers at the start. I look at myself, and I'm going nowhere fast. Maybe this is just a facade, a shallow mask to cover up the fact that we are all hurting inside, that no amount of pride could dry the sea of tears, years of pain, waiting for the clouds to clear, fear settling like dust. And you know what? Some days, I am just tired. Some days, I'm barely strong enough to carry the burden of my heavy heart, let alone the weight of the world on my shoulders. Some days, I need space on my own. No internet, no mobile phone. And some days, I just want to run away from it all. But then on some days, I hear a voice call in the back of my mind. Each syllable sounds like a little droplet of light falling on deaf eyes that wander through the darkness. And it says to me, why would you want to run when you have wings for feet? Fly. So this is to all those with wings for feet who keep on running. Please do not run. Fly. Fly like the poet's pen across the page. Fly like it was your 12th birthday, and you just made the biggest wish and blew out a candle with a flame the size of the sun, and the darkness of the universe is now your living room. Fly like a midnight moonlight city cyclist going downhill with headphones on and no hands. Fly like a runner in the park, racing against the sunset. No regrets, like every mistake you've ever made has just been washed away. Fly, like your new crush has just noticed you. <laughs> Looking fly, and has walked up to you, holding roses and chocolates to ask you out on a date, and they're paying. Fly, <laughs> like you never stopped believing in love, like you weren't the only one. There was a time when everything you imagined was real. Your mind is the most powerful instrument that you will ever own, only second to your heart, which you feel, and they are made of one of the same, so fly. Fly like you are not worried about the days, the months and the years of growing older, because each day that you live is the youngest that you will ever be. And we live eternally. In each dream, in each sleep, we keep a piece of ourselves just to give to each other. So this is to all those with wings for feet who keep on running. Please do not run. Fly. If you are lucky, you will never have to remember home for your mother's tears or the rage in your father's voice when it shakes. Home will be somewhere you run to, never away from. It will never chase you away, a rabid dog hot on your heels with teeth like a shark, teeth so sharp you can already feel it cutting into you. If you are lucky, home will never up and leave you, and up and leave you, and up and leave you, to the point where whenever anyone ups and leaves you, it feels like home. You will look for them as if they are home, because we all need somewhere to stay, even if it is a person, somewhere safe, somewhere warm. Home should never be to you an abusive ex-lover. It should never beat you down, taunting you with its beady eyes and clenched fists, knowing too well how much you want it and how much you hurt because it hurts you. And though it has hurt you and you left it, you should never long for it, but you do. You wish to return to its forsaking arms to be held once more by a home, even if only for a little while. You try to remember whether you left home or if it left you. If you are lucky, its memory will never haunt you when you move on, so you not have to remember. A city is merely a collection of buildings, and buildings do not have souls. So how can home haunt you as though a ghost? But it does, cold sweat on your forehead as you buckle to your knees, for who else wakes in the middle of the night, filled with this longing, both a nightmare and a dream? You cannot tell if home is dying or if it is you, but you know you are both fighting to stay alive, at times fighting each other. Home should never break you in two, so wherever you go, you are never whole. Half of you remains where you left it, and the other half is rejected where you arrive. You are a split, flat-sided pendulum suspended in the air on each side. 
if you are lucky, and you were, none of this would have ever happened to you. You should have enough of home to take with you wherever you go, yet you don't. You carry only what was left to you, only enough to fit in the cracks of the lines in your palm, a small streak of hope, and so you hold it tight, fist clenched with both rage and regret. Imagine how it feels to be chased out of home, to have your grip ripped, loosened from your fingertips, something you so dearly hold onto. Like a lover's hand that slips when it is pulled away, you are always reaching. My father would speak of home, reaching. Speaking of familiar faces, the girl next door, who would eventually grow up to be my mother, the fruit seller at the market, the lonely man at the top of the road who nobody spoke to in our house, at the bottom of the street, lit up by a single flickering lamp where beyond was only darkness there. They would sit and tell stories of monsters that lurked and came only at night to catch the children who sat and listened to stories of monsters that lurked. This is how they lived. Each memory buried, an artifact left to be discovered by archaeologists, the last words on a dying family member's lips. This was sacred. Not even monsters could taint it. But there were monsters that came during the day, monsters that tore families apart with their giant hands and fingers that slept on triggers. The sound of gunshots ripping through the sky became familiar like the tapping of rainfall on the windowsill, monsters that would kill and hide behind speeches, suits and ties, monsters that would chase families away, forcing them to leave everything behind. I remember when we first stepped off the plane. Everything was foreign unfamiliar, uninviting. Even the air in my lungs left me short of breath. We came here to find refuge. They called us refugees, so we hid ourselves in their language until we sounded just like them, changed the way we dressed to look just like them, made this our home until we lived just like them and began to speak of familiar faces, the girl next door who'd eventually grow up to be a mother, the fruit seller at the market, the lonely man at the top of the road who nobody spoke to in our house at the bottom of the street, lit up by a single flickering lamp where beyond was only darkness there. We would sit and watch police that lurked and came only at night to arrest the youths who sat and watched police that lurked. This is how we lived. I remember one day I heard them say to me, they come here to take our jobs. They need to go back to where they came from. Not knowing I was one of the ones who came, I told them that a refugee is simply someone who is trying to make a home. So next time, when you go home, tuck your children in and kiss your families good night. Be glad that the monsters never came for you in their suits and ties, never came for you in the newspapers where the media lies, never came for you, that you are not despised. I know that deep inside the hearts of each and every one of us, we are all always reaching for a place that we can call home.